Okay, what the heck does NXP Semiconductors need to do before its stock can bottom? The company's had a very turbulent year. In 2016, NXP agreed to sell itself to Qualcomm. But then this spring, as part of the escalating trade dispute with China, the Chinese regulators blocked the deal on what I regard as fabricated antitrust grounds. Finally, in July, the two companies gave up. Since then, NXP has been trying to get its groove back as an independent company, but Wall Street remains skeptical. Now, I like NXP. These guys have a ton of exposure to the connected car, the Internet of Things, and what's known as the near-field communications, the technology that enables things like Apple Pay. Yet the stock keeps getting clobbered. Some of that's because the latest quarter was just okay. Then today, the company held an analyst meeting that I thought would turn things around. Instead, the stock sold off. It was down more than four bucks. Why? The one thing that really jumps out at me here is that NXP told us they repurchased $3.75 billion worth of stock since July. That's an insanely voracious buyback, given this is a $31 billion company. However, during that time, uh, uh, the stock had slipped from 98 down to 93, uh, and before falling to 89 and a half today. In short, the buyback doesn't seem to be helping, at least not yet. Nevertheless, I think this company has a great story tell. So let's take a closer look with Rick Clemmer, the president and CEO of NXP Semic Duggars. Learn more about how his company's doing where it's headed. Mr. Clemmer, welcome back to Mad Money. Good to Thank see you, sir. Me. Thank you. Good Have a seat. You. Thank you. All right, Rick, uh, when I always talk to Qualcomm, and Qualcomm told me the solution that we have to being just a cell phone company is we're going to own the connected car. We're going to own the connected car because we're going to buy NXP Semi. Somehow that's become the prevailing storyline. Is that a correct storyline when it comes to what you do? It is, absolutely. So we're really focused on autonomous driving, how to make driving safer. So if you look at level through level two and three of autonomous driving, you know, it's about 60, 65 percent of the total semiconductor content of a complete autonomous vehicle, which, you know, isn't going to happen for five or six right. years. But if we can do through level two or three and make driving safer, then we think that's really a play for us. So, for example, in radar, we're the number one company in radar, designed in in 10 of the top 10 car companies. So that's really our focus is how we can facilitate things and make driving safer. Entertainment has also been something. When we look at the entertainment portion of the car, which grows every year, you're deeply involved in that. We are. We have our i.mx platform that really has been a leader associated with that space. We we have design wins now for the next four or five years, really at a high level. Uh, we are kind of for the mid tier and the low end cars, the choice associated with entertainment. Okay, Rick, did anything happen since October? You know, since the 2016 bid that has made it so that people feel that you perhaps are no longer exactly involved, and I'm including the fact that you did sell $400 million worth of stock, which wasn't a bad idea. We thought that NXP was done. You know, I had to sell because of tax reasons. I had a tax situation that was changing at the end of November in the Netherlands where I was right. going to go from a special tax ruling to a full taxpayer, 52%. And so I had to sell at least a, a share of my position, okay. you know, and I moved part of that to a trust to be able to uh, be sure that I could make donations in the future. But a long time since you've been able to go on. Maybe you can start buying back stock. I actually have been doing that you since have. July. I have. Okay. And my CFO has as well. So we both have bought stock personally. In addition to, we set up an equity program for our top management to be sure we locked them in for three years so that we could get to the next level for the company. Is there a reason to think that once you finish this buyback that you're done in buying back stock? Not at all. And we're going to generate a lot of cash. You know, if we grow 50% faster than the market, which we have complete confidence we'll do, and generate 31 to 33% operating income, we're going to generate a ton of cash. My CFO talked about that today yes. in our analyst meeting. And if you combine that with going to a two times leverage, which we feel very mm -hmm. comfortable with, you could have 10 to $12 billion available for stock repurchase or whatever is appropriate to return it's cash third, to shareholders. More than a third of the company. You know, that's one of the reasons why, Rick. I was quite surprised. I think that the story is an Internet of Things story. I think it is a near-field communications. It's payments. Payments are going nuts. You can look at Square, PayPal. It doesn't matter. But you're the facilitator behind these. So what am I missing? You know, there is nothing. Uh, you know, I talked to all of the investors that were at the conference today. Right. No one could explain why our stock it was. It was a the little only, mystifying. The only thing that we were trying to take was maybe your comments earlier today about the car industry going away. Now, the problem is, is when you think about it, you know, the car industry in China is 60% larger than the car industry in the U.S. The car industry in Europe is 22% larger than the car industry in the U.S. So looking at Silicon Valley number of cars may not be the absolute best indicator as to what's going on in the car and industry. And because you are a worldwide company. And you totally. Touch now, you've got here something that also reminds me that 
if you want Internet of Things, it may be NXP that's the right choice. Absolutely. So what we're trying to do is take advantage of how we've really emerged on the Internet of Things. You know, we talked about it when we met, you know, two and a half sure. years ago or so. But now what we've done is try to put more color around it. So what we see is the Internet of Things really being created through the cloud and, and really the benefits associated with the cloud. But to be able to take advantage of those benefits, you need to do some edge processing. And so we have a kit here that sells for $50 for companies to just go experiment with Internet of Things to go try it out. But what we're trying to do is do the pre-processing at the edge before it goes to the cloud and then be able to take the action from the cloud from there so that we can do that. So our microcontroller platforms going to applications processors, and in the two years we've developed a crossover product that has a lot of the functionality of applications right. processor at a microcontroller cost, which opens up the market significantly. One last question. It, it, do you agree with my analysis that there was no real reason antitrust-wise for Qualcomm to be blocked from buying? There was no real reason. You know, we met with the Chinese. Any issue that they raised, there were remedies that were put right. forth associated with it. Just don't. All right, well, look, I think, yeah, I thought your stock should have gone up on the presentation. Boy, was I ever wrong. But I'm not going to be wrong for long. That's Rick Clemmers, the CEO of NXP Semiconductors. This is one cheap stock. You heard about what the buyback can do. You heard about the insider buying. I like everything I heard. Mad Money's back after the break. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.